I wanted to talk about, I know you mentioned um, before you actually went to the University of Medina, mm. you spent some time learning Arabic yeah. and I've got a few videos on this um, because I could relate to this story. So I want your advice because, and you also mentioned that you had learned Spanish and Turkish before that. So you definitely can share some beneficial advice on learning languages and stuff, right? And um, so just to explain, um, you mentioned it in the podcast on the other podcast. If you could just explain what your process was within those years prior to joining uh, Medina. Yes. Uh, so Arabic specifically, well, I'll say this about language while we're talking about language. Most language learners, they struggle the most with their second language as an adult, okay? You have to have a completely different game plan if you're a child learning a language than if you're an adult. When you're a child, your brain is so plastic and you're synthesizing things so fast that you don't bother to learn grammar. You just get in there and do it, right? You pick it up like a sponge. And that's why you some, you know, you find kids that speak two, three, four languages as languages, and it's just like it's automatic. You ask them about grammar, they have no idea about grammar. They don't need it. They don't need grammar. Guess what? Once you're an adult, you need grammar because, you know, things are a little less flexible and you need to understand kind of the structure behind everything. The difficulty with learning your first non-native language as an adult is that you're actually learning two languages at once. You're learning your target language and you're learning grammar for the first time because the, the languages that you speak natively, you don't understand the grammar. When I was growing up, I didn't understand English grammar. I didn't understand subject, verb, object, and you know, the past participle and, you know, sentence trees and this sort of thing. Right. But when I started studying Spanish and that was the first language that I, that I studied as an adult, all of a sudden, okay, tense, what's the idea of tense? What's the idea of a verb? What are the different sort of things that can happen to a verb? Like I have to account for who's doing it. I have to account for the time. Is it continuous or not continuous? Is it something that happened in the past? Is it reported speech? All these sorts of different things. You know, you have to think about them in an intentional way. Can you speak the language without understanding grammar? Yeah. If I were to go to Spain or Mexico or whatever and immerse myself, I would pick up the language. I'd be able to speak conversationally. But if you're looking to master a language, especially the literary aspect of a language, and I think if we're talking about Arabic, we want to master the literary aspect of the language so that we can interact with the Quran. There's no way around the grammar. So understanding grammar as like a superstructure for all human languages, that all human languages have certain features in common uh, when it comes to grammar. And then some of them have, you know, they differ here, they differ there, or they use different tools in order to achieve the same thing, right? Um, understanding those kind of categories and the superstructures of language is very important, uh, especially for Arabic. Once you understand that, then it's just plugging in, right? So right now I'm learning, um, I'm actually learning um, uh, Malaysian, Bahasa Malayu as, as a language because my wife is half Malay. Oh, and we're going to go visit her father, inshallah, in December. So I'm on a crash course. I'm back to ground zero <laughs> uh, with learning a language I don't know. I didn't know anything about. Um, and so the questions now, like, let's see, like Spanish, Italian, uh, Arabic, Turkish, it's like my fifth language that I've, learned or tried to learn. So I understand the questions to ask. So how does the sentence work? Like, how does it move? Do I have to have a verb? Do I have to have this? Do I have to have a pronoun? Malay is really interesting because there's no tense for the verb. So it's a very pronoun heavy language. So now it's like, okay, I have to put extra importance on this sort of thing, or I have to, I don't have to worry about this particular thing. There's no conjugation with the verbs, which is mm. like the opposite of Spanish. Spanish was so hard for me because coming from English, where we only have two conjugation forms, I walk, you walk, he walks, right? That's only two forms. Spanish, you have the full gamut and you have so many verb tenses. You have maybe 12 verb tenses. Everything's a verb tense. So Spanish was extremely difficult for me, um, especially in the beginning. But then once you understand how grammar works, then it's just plugging in. How does this language do that? Mm. Oh, it does it with a word. How does this language do that? Oh, it does it with a different sort of a letter or a conjugation or something like that. Um, so don't feel bad if your second language uh, as an adult is extremely difficult because you're, you're, you're learning grammar at the same time, which is kind of, uh, which is kind of difficult. When it comes to 
Arabic and what my, my, my program was. Okay. So I was studying the Medina books and they're all online for free. I used LQ to Toronto and they have videos, explanation videos. Um, I wanted to finish it within a year. That was like my, my goal. And so I divided it up and divided my time. Every book was like 30 lessons or 30, you know, 31, 32 lessons, something like that. And I would try to watch a video, the explanation video every single day in the morning before work. So, and at that time I was working as a farmer, uh, I, I was like manual labor. Yeah. 10 hour days, like subhanAllah. And that's another thing too. Here we let's talk about something that self-development, bringing it into Islamic self-development. We believe in barakah, right? We believe in blessing. In a cold materialistic world, it should have been the hardest thing to do, or that should have been the hardest period of my life to learn a language because I was working 10 hour days, six days a week. And it was very, very strenuous labor. Uh, I was a new father, right? Like I had all these sorts of things. I was very poor, <laughs> you know, just, I, I didn't have like very much money. My wages weren't very much. I was living in a barn. Actually, we lived in a barn, uh, an apartment in a barn, but a barn nonetheless. And, um, it should have been a very, very, very difficult time to do it, but Allah can put barakah in things and Allah can make something that's otherwise very, very difficult. He can make it much easier than it should be. Uh, and Allah put barakah in that time for me. So, yeah, so I wake up every morning before going, before going to the farm, I would do like 30 minutes, listen to the explanation video. Then in the evening, I would do all the exercises for that lesson, or I would try really hard to get all the, the exercises for that lesson done. And then I would just rinse, repeat. I also had a different sort of thing. When you're studying a language, the two most important things are grammar and vocab, especially with Arabic. A lot of Arabic learners, they understand that the grammar is very important because everybody makes them afraid of the grammar. Oh, it's like it's our Arabic grammar. And so a lot of people, they neglect the vocab, which is actually the worst thing, because if you know how a language should move, but you don't have any words, you can't say anything and you can't understand anything. And so you get discouraged and then you give up eventually because you're not seeing any progress. I'm learning all of these abstract categories, all this theory, you know, the subject and inna wa akhawatuha and uh, okay, I know that the subject of inna has to be mansub and then the object of inna has to be, uh, you know, marfu and all these sorts of things, but it's all just theory. You can't say anything. <laughs> Someone comes up to you and they speak Arabic to you and you don't understand a word. You get discouraged. It's like, what have I been studying all this time for? So vocab is extremely important. Being able to say words, to recognize words, because that little, it's like a dopamine hit. Like every single time you hear a speaker say a word, I know that word. Wow. That's amazing. Just the other, just the other night mm -hmm. I did a wedding and the, uh, family was part Malay. And so I'm studying Malay. Right. And, uh, I heard one word that I knew. Bole, bole. I was like, yeah, you can do it. You know? And I was like, Hey, I understood. I understood or, or uh, it was hot inside. And someone's was like, keep us, keep us, keep us as a fan. Like they were calling for a fan. I was like, I was like, look, like, I, had, I actually understood what that person was saying. Those are the sorts of things that actually keep you going. Right. So vocab is extremely important, especially with Arabic. Most people neglect it. So what I used and what I'm using now for, for learning Malay is an, an app called Anki, A-N-K-I. It's an open source flashcard app. It's better than flashcards. I did use actual written flashcards, uh, as well, but eventually I, I switched over to the app because it's much more efficient use of your time. Um, that's not to say that there aren't benefits to writing. Writing is actually extremely benefit beneficial for language acquisition. Um, but when it comes to flashcards, it takes a lot of time if you're going to write out every single one and the routine for reviewing your flashcards gets sequential and that's what you want to avoid. You want to break up the sequence. You want it to be randomized so that you're not getting used to seeing, well, I know that this word, I know this word's meaning because it came after this other word and I recognized the word before. So now I know, no, you want to break it up so that it's randomized, so that you're actually learning the word for what it is. Um, so Anki is an open source flashcard app and you can download different decks. There's de decks of cards for the Medina books. There's decks of cards for, uh, proverbs. I was doing Arabic proverbs and, you know, Quranic vocabulary and all these sorts of different things. And then what it does for you is that it has you rate how well you remember any given word. So you see the flashcard, you're like, oh, what is this word? What is this word? And then, okay, you hit show to reveal the, the meaning of it. If you rec, then you can rate it and rating it will determine when you're going to see it again. So if you're having a really hard time with a word, you can hit it's hard 
and you'll see it much sooner. If you're like, that's very, very easy. I know this word, you hit easy and then you might not see it for days, right? And so it keeps the scheduling and it keeps the practice for you. And you can customize everything. You can customize the flashcard, what's on the back, what's on the front. Are you testing for the back? Are you testing for the front? Uh, how many new words you're going to do a day? All these sorts of things. And the most important thing, as everybody knows who's in self-development, is small and consistent, right? Language and memory especially work best small chunks very frequently. You want to memorize the Quran. You want to memorize five lines of Quran a day, okay? Don't think that you're going to sit for two hours and then that's it. No. 15 minutes before Fajr, 15 minutes after Fajr, 15 minutes before Dover, 15 minutes after Dover, 15 minutes before Asr, 15 minutes after Asr. You will remember it much, much, much better than if you try to dedicate just one, one single big block of time to it. So that was kind of my, my, mm -hmm. my, my program. And Alhamdulillah, by the grace of Allah, I was able to finish uh, the curriculum uh, before I went to Medina. So then I basically did the curriculum a second time when I went to Medina. And that shows another thing about language acquisition was that, okay, so I had all this knowledge. It was literary knowledge. I could read, I could understand. But if I tried to listen to somebody, I couldn't understand a thing. I, when I got, mm. I was not in the, because language is, is, you know, there's levels and memory too. The first point is recognition, right? After that, you're working on recall, right? So you might be able to see a word or hear a word like Malay. I heard bole. Like, oh, I, I recognize what that word means. That's, that's level one. Level two is somebody asks you, Hey, what's the word in Malay for that? That takes recognition. Now I have to call it, you know, recall it from my memory. So you want to move always from recognition to recall. But then you're also moving through the different senses. So it's easy to see and recognize that's easier because it's on your time. I read, I can keep looking. I can keep looking. I can keep looking. Oh, what is that word? What is that word? When you're listening, it's there and it's gone. You have a much smaller time in order to recognize. And so it's a whole different skill to be able to listen. And so when I got to Medina, I was able to read Arabic. I could understand, you know, a fair bit of it, but I had no listening skills at all. I would sit in class and when I got out of class, it was like someone had flossed my brain. Like it was like very, very, it drew a lot of energy from me. I wasn't understanding. Uh, I would make very, very bad mistakes. Like when I thought people were asking me something, they were asking me something entirely different. Right. But then, you know, with time, then you, your ear becomes acclimated. Okay. So that's the second thing. The first is your eye. The second is your ear. And then the last piece of the puzzle is your tongue. Right. So to be able to speak is the last thing for any language to be able to now respond and in a way that's natural, that's, you're not translating in your head, uh, uh, right? Because you're translating an English sentence into Arabic. No, you're saying, uh, like now you're talking in a, in a, in a natural way because you kind of stacked your, your language skill and it becomes to be a natural thing. 